battle for cash. Previously on the battle for cash, the battle for cash contestants hit the studio. Endeve mu pili satu nya kumi kumutiku mu ha kamadi mulogo. This week on the battle for cash. I find it very risky because you're depending on one customer. What's your plan B if it doesn't work out? This can never fail to work out. No, if that buyer, that particular buyer, yes. doesn't want your product for a particular reason. Battle for cash. After the tough challenges and brutal boardroom sessions, it has come down to these ten: Kina Sako, Elite Social Investment Club. Agri Investment Kibbutz, Cape of Good Hope, ND, Kawempe Police Women Poultry Group, Oyster Investment Club, The Corporates Club Uganda, Mvara Ward, and Akuna Mchezo. One of these clubs will walk away 30 million shillings richer. What does an investor look for before investing in a business? Well, you see here on the Battle for Cash, only a few investment clubs will emerge winners in the end. But we also want every investor to succeed in all their ventures. And that's why we brought them investors. All they have to do is show them the money. Tonight, the contestants meet not the judges, but potential business partners and investors. Alan, Lillian and Daniel. These three are looking for a venture with the capacity to spit out profits and ability to expand to invest in. So, whose project has this combination? Is it Hakuna Mchezo's books and paper bags? Some of the products that we make, uh, these are the books with the label Hakuna Mchezo and it's registered uh, by Uganda Registrar of Business Services. And two, we have the paper bags, uh, which are branded Akuna Mchezo. That means we are graduating from the old paper bags to the new, which is the branded one. And that's why we need the money to change from this to this. Because this fetches at least high returns uh, according to this. Likewise, when it comes to health, this one is more healthier than this, and it is environmentally friendly. Let me listen to your figures, friendly. please. Each book that we make of this choir, it costs us around 2,100. So when we sell, we make a profit of 350 shillings. When it comes to paper bag, it costs us around 850. Uh, when it comes to the finished product, we can get 650 shillings. Are you currently selling it in the market? We're already selling it because we're already registered. What are your sales like and what is the needed investment? Our profits uh, were up to 2,300,000. 2, that means we sold 2,080 books. Those are your profits or your sales? Those are our sales. 2,080 books. Within which period of time? That is eight months. Okay. When it comes to paper bags, uh, we sold around 2,300 packets. And each packet is 25 uh, paper bags. Okay, just, just take me through your cost centers in this operation. Uh, you know, take me through your rent, your, your staff load, your, the utilities you spend, your cost of inputs. I want to just clearly understand how your operation is running. Uh, as per now, we have three employees who are on the station. We are not there, but they are there. And we pay these employees, uh, one is paid 100,000 and the two, 120,000 for those three employees. Then the rent is 250 per month. 250 uh, per month. When it comes to electricity, we pay 80,000. Inputs, I thought, would have been more important on this list. The cost yeah, so when it comes materials. to inputs, are the four boxes that uh, we use as paper in a week, each box is 65,000. 
So 65,000 times four. Now those for one choir, there's a small book. So the, the inputs for each box is 65,000? Yeah, 65. For the small box, and there's, uh, there's those big box, the big books, there's a box. That one there is 135,000. Can, can we just deal with block figures here? Just give me, you know, you've operated for eight months. I'm sure you know the cost of inputs per month. It's a while ago. Oxisa could be to cause a sacuba box semu. A year bitabo. To Jigula F three, to Jigula Mutual Kumina Mukaga, next two. It to Gula Reza, the Sukasa, Bigate, you know. Bigato Amurum, a Omez Mukosa sent him a comes of rock from Yavitavium tuned. Omez Kalvatuvalidemo and Ocatona, I tried to watch as the Omez Mulamba. Motaga sent him maker. The motor go kung get business. Tweta ga machine, that is a bay. Mweta ga sent him maker. Tweta ga kubudem tweta ga millioni chikumi kumi na satu mumunana. Zizale maker. Tusovolua ok funa mu sent as suka muzino okwala mutwala mubanga ngali ya mwaka. Solo kubanga twina munga million chikumi mosa. Uriba janga ayagara kujugura. Mm. O sobola mwendo chugujua. Tulimu sente ntono, tulimu milio ni inga abili musatu. Ngo sinzi dekuti. Chien sinzi dako, bie bie bintu, bie tukola, bie tuinamu. Nesa mm. wazi no? I'm not quite convinced as yet. Okay. They will come back to us with their numbers. Okay. Hakuna mchezu leaves hoping that their lack of numbers has not cost them this opportunity. Next, it's Andy, the shoemakers. Business, you know? Tuakajita ambuza emyeze na Tuakalebi yuma bibidi nga bulichimu cha, cha, cha wakadevutano Ebidi advanced okukira kumine Ebi kandibi tuwa detuko zesa Tuso bola bulunaku Okufuru umia peya ze nga to Ama kumiana Nga buli peya Tujibali jide Mutuwa logumu mwenye kumitano Nga buli mwezi tuso bolo kola peya chinana Tumuru Mwagami mwaga lopukada satu mwaga Tuwa lopukada satu mwaga Nga buli mwezi mujia kufuna sente meka? Tuvera tufuna milioni kuminabili. Bozi kufisamu omwa akaze milioni chukumi anamu nya. O tuburi de capacity jemu, jemu sobolo oku, okutu ukiriza buwemba nga mufunye sente zino. Yes, Nete te, te mutuburi de capacity jemu kolida kuka kakano. Mwumera jetulimu tusobola okufrumia buli lunako. Peya kuminabili. Mm. Buli ingato e frumira kunusu kanana. So business here, we can move by the most in America. Now, when 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 now, I'm on the material. Two is a million is where we're going. To answer yourself, those are come out. Andy is not sure they have grabbed the attention of any of the three investors. Mvara Ward is next with their Apiary project. Are their numbers sweet enough to attract one of the three business partners? Product is honey. This is a lucrative business where you cannot look for people. People look for you. Therefore, our major challenge is production. Production is low. The demand is high. So we need money to, do, to produce more honey so that we can meet the market all over the world. For us to increase production, we need equipment. In total for our equipment, we need 95 million 535-600. Now we come to production. Uh, we harvest honey in, in a year twice. In its beehive, you harvest 15 kilograms of honey. Then in a year, you'll harvest 30 kilograms. Now, the cost of honey, one kilogram is 5,000. How much are you looking for? We need 95 million. What's your payback period? We are going to pay it in four years time. So how many beehives do you have currently? Currently, we have 100 beehives. Okay. Yes. So you want to expand to 150? 150. So how much have you invested so far? How much is your company worth right now? We are not only doing the business of honey alone, we are also saving in our group. This is uh, obviously a food. Yes. Uh, yeah, and I'm sure there are some standards of, of, uh, of production, of hygiene, of packaging, and so on and so forth. Can you just take me through your quality control strategy or quality control plan that you are employing as it is uh, in your business right now? Uh, well, uh, we have 
met the standards uh, where our honey has been tested. <coughs> we have the certificate. Okay. So okay. there is really need to be very clean. The hygiene is of high order. Still to come on the battle for cash. I find it very risky because you're depending on one customer. What's your plan B if it doesn't work out? This can never fail to work out. No, if that buyer, that particular buyer yes. doesn't want your product for a particular reason. Battle for cash. Battle for cash. Tonight, the contestants meet not the judges, but potential business partners and investors, Alan, Lillian, and Daniel. The business partners are looking for unique ideas that are profitable and sustainable. The Corporates Club Uganda is about to find out whether their fruit drying project has that combination. There are two types of fruits dried. Conventional fruits, these are semi-organic fruits then organic fruits. Conventional fruits go for 5,000 a kilogram, dried fruit kilogram, while organic fruits go for 8,000 a kilogram. The, these farmers who are drying the product use the locally made solar fruit dryers. Each dries 27, 25 kilograms per day. Costing at 8,000, this becomes 1.4 million every day. Uh, 30 day. In 30 days, they sell the fruit for 42 million shillings. And in, in six months, which is our projection for the first phase of our project, they, they sell for 252 million just in six months. Since these farmers are using locally made solar dryers, we want to construct two modern solar fruit dryers with an organic content tes testing facility. The machine capacity five, of, of machine capacity 500 kilograms. Which, which is at a cost of 18 million each, and a 5 million shillings for testing facility, making it 23 million first phase. Uh, if we look at this, if we have 500, if we have 500 kilograms, and we sell 500 kilograms times 8,000 8, per day, we get 4 million every day. We, in 30 days, we would have gotten 120 million, and in six months, 720 million shillings. If we construct two machines, that would be 36 million. This is the only money we want currently, and we would make a profit of 1.08 billion in six months. You say the raw materials are currently being, uh, are coming from the farmer gardens, right? So when you do expand, do you ex is that going to are you suggesting that the material is already there in abundance to support the expansion someone who has traveled to Ntungamo would uh, would know that when you're coming back to Kampara you'd pick a pineapple at a price called Nyarutema at around 400 shillings you get 10 pineapples and they put you in a boot of the car for 2,000 shillings so which makes these materials so abundant to get from it Okay, then let's talk more about market. Who is buying organic dry fruit? It's an organization called Fruit of the Nile Growers Association. It is located in Jinja Town currently. It is buying these dried fruits and exporting them to the European Union market and the U.S. market. So well, we are also looking at the projection that in some, in some years to come or during the project implementation we may even be able to access that foreign market ourselves without passing through the the, the this nile group let me just ask are you actually operating now we are not doing any food that dry ah, now okay uh, but we are ready to set up are you farmers in Ntungamo yourself yes we are farmers yeah, are you fruit farmers in Ntungamo yes we are okay yes ourselves Tell me why the, the profit appears to be so huge. Why uh, do we have, uh, you're saying that the cost from a 700 million uh, projection, mm -hmm. your costs are only 30%, including the raw material? The cost may rise as we get much competition, but we think by now in the first six months of production. Okay. Okay, I, I find it very risky because you're depending on one customer. What's your plan B if it doesn't work out? This can never fail to work out. No, if the buyer, that particular buyer yes. doesn't want your product for a particular reason. We shall cross the bridge when we reach it.
which we, has we been We want to presuppose that the bridge is there. So the, cross it now. Uh, this group that has been buying for the last 12 years from farmers, at the moment, uh, I don't think they have made the loss that they can pull out of the market. However, there are other groups that are buying the similar products on the market. This is not the only group that is buying the products. We can sell through others. But this is the group that we are seeing that we can memo make a memorandum of understanding with and start selling immediately. Yeah. That's great. But thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Too. No business idea is risk-free. Up next is Cape of Good Hope. And their big idea is cage fish farming. Why did we choose cage fish farming? It's because uh, we have the ability to, th there's an opportunity of mass scale production of approximately uh, 184,000 kilograms in uh, a full cycle, as well as uh, we are able to have a precise control of uh, the, uh, the growth of the fish in terms of feeding patterns, uh, this, uh, the size in terms of weight, as well as the survival rate. Whereas the increased demand for white meat has also uh, pushed us to you know, exploit that opportunity as opposed to red meat, as well as government initiative in terms of exemptions uh, for some of the fish, uh, cage fish products like nets, and uh, funding that we, where that is uh, to be allocated to fishing, around 400 billion. And then there is no land ownership as far as this is concerned and many suitable sites in terms of lakes. In regards to the fish species recommended by the Aquaculture Department of Uganda, they recommend uh, uh, Nile tilapia because of its ability, to, uh, its, its ability to, to survive high stocking density and high survival rate, as well as it grows faster compared to the other breeds. It, it grows uh, between uh, six to eight months, and the average weight is 500 grams at harvest. Uh, we expect an income of 1.6 billion, 580,680,000. Fixed costs at uh, 74,760,000. Operational costs at 1.1 million billion. The payback period, the payback period for the project is three years and, and 11 months. A sustainability plan of the project entails uh, one, community acceptance, staff training and retention, research and development, maintenance of assets, quality assurance, internal controls, benchmarking, environmental impact assessment. Now all this fish, where will you sell it? Our, our site being Maja and Jebusia district, we, in the very short run, we tend to, we will look at, uh, we will target Busia district, Jinja, Tororo, Mbale, and the neighboring districts. Then we'll expand to Kampala and the rest of the districts. So that what have you done so far? Uh, what we have done for this project, uh, we have consulted our, we have had consultations with them, with with uh, with Omal, who is a, Omal is a is a is an expert, specialist from aquaculture department, who has who has helped us with the, the proposal, and then Vastra has helped us with the cage designs. We've also identified a potential site, that's in Busia Majanji district. So what are you looking for? You're not specific on what you want from us. Uh, we are here to showcase our, our proposal. And just like we told you, as one of our weaknesses is the, the limited capital. For example, if you only hit 50% survival rate, are you still profitable? 50% survi su su survival rate will, yeah. will, will mean we are, we, are almost, we are almost not at, uh, at par, but mm -hmm. we shall break even still within that, within the, within that period. There has been, there's always been talk of uh, fish poisoning. Uh, there has been an issue of security especially given the general uh, uh, nature of the, of, of the fishing communities. Um, I know that some people in the fish cage farming have been p policing their cages with the armed guards and things like that. So what are your risk management, what's your risk management profile like in terms oh. of actually keeping these fish alive? That's a very good question. Like in every business, there's always a risk. And we've, uh, we, we did a risk uh, assessment as well. First things first is engaging. We, we intend to engage the community to let them own the project. So basically, they have to appreciate the project and own it as theirs. That is more of, uh, yeah, but basically engaging them. Then two, the site is uh, strategically allocated. There is a barracks around. Besides the army, we intend to employ private security. Yeah, in as far as our project is concerned. And all that is within this costing, operational cost? Yes, yes please. It's a good idea. 
but like he's pointed out there's risk a lot of risk of course no business uh, there's no business without risk but that's true there seems to be too much exposure uh, that's my feeling, but yeah. but let's internalize it and we'll be able to get back to you all right Elite Social Investment Club want to open a pharmacy and their next. So we conceived this idea through the DFCU scheme of save and invest. So we managed to save some money and then invested in the first pharmacy in 2017, which is called Better Health Pharmacy and it is in the Gayaza Trading Center. So after investing in that and uh, the numbers are convincing, now our concept right now is to expand and invest in another pharmacy and others. So in the immediate term, we want to open a pharmacy in 2019 at the beginning. And the estimated capital is uh, 65.5 million. Then we also want to invest in a, a magazine, which we shall call Better Health Magazine, and our estimate is 24.5 million. The expected profit that we expect what we expect to get in the first year about 30 million from the farmers and the 25 million from the magazine why do we think it is a very good business idea the market for health products is big every person you see around is a potential customer for a pharmacy so our target is how do we tap into that okay. then you find that the health care cost in uganda is always increasing so we want to tap into that, but by bringing down the cost, trying to open up pharmacies that offer the medicines, the babies' products, the cosmetics at affordable prices and accessible to people. Then the magazine, the reason for the magazine, we can't promote a pharmacy. That is the regulation according to the, to the law. So we can use the magazine to promote healthy living, and in there, people will also get to know our pharmacies. Why do we think this idea can work. We can base it on what is existing. Because we already have a pharmacy, we have the numbers. Monthly purchases, the drugs, the cosmetics and the like, it is between 17 and 20 million. So once we, we, get, we do that, that's the purchase. Then the monthly sales, it is 27 million. Every month, that's what we make. Then the profit after tax, after expenses and the like, it is 3 million per month. So if you are to look at our business in from 2017 up to now, we have grown it to 150 million. That we ex the, a conservative estimate is about 150 million right now as it is. So if we are to open at least 10 pharmacies, that is by 2025, there we are looking at 1.5 billion. And our grand plan, when we have so many pharmacies across the country, then we can go into the health insurance insurance scheme you talked about your solution being providing medical care at a lower cost not medical care but drugs at a lower cost i want to know how you're going to achieve that because you see cost, cost is influenced by particular things when we went in we had first do a market survey looking at the buying price from the wholesalers and then the retail price we found mm -hmm. that on average people are looking at 40 percent profit for us we reduced it 30 percent but while maintaining the, our expenses and the like, we can still make the money within that. So are, are you guys pharmacists? No, we are not. Uh -huh. But we are employing professional people. So you, you, you're into pharmacies purely for, for business? So we started the pharmacy first because uh, we think it is a form of insurance for our members. So what exactly are you looking for from us now? You, uh, how much money and for what? Right now, our estimate, if we are to invest in, like we are saying in, the, in the January, to open up another pharmacy, then in June, start up the magazine, we already have about 50 million. So we need like 40 more million. Yeah, okay, thank it you. was nice talking to you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Yeah. The ladies in uniform march in, hoping that a good luck charm will follow them too have a dream to invest into Pigari project which after some study we saw it viable to take it up because of the benefits which it involved. Uh, Pigari is one of the of the projects which has market all over within Kampala and outside Kampala. Uh, the turnover is so good 
at the end of the year, as you calculated. Then uh, it has uh, this thing of, 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 of treatment. is not so much as long as you go into, as long as you are, the hygiene is very good. Uh, you spray around, you clean the house. The workers are so good, you limit the people who enter the sty. It can be so good. It doesn't have a lot of cost in terms of treatment. That's why we have come up with this project, because we think it is going to do so well for us, in addition to other things we are doing. Bring us income at the end of, of the year, and eventually it will be coming in at the end of every six months. Uh, the source can be got from three to three, to f from two to three months, which are brought up up to, uh, to the uh, uh, 11th month, they will produce at the 11th month. We are going to begin with sores which are 50 in number. According to our calculations, 50 sores will, be, will bring us over 30 million at the end of one year. And then we needed uh, just an investment capital of uh, each so of two to three months is around 120,000 so of two to three on months. On purchase on feeding on both? No, just a so. Purchasing it. Purchasing it, no. the feeding cost, each so can eat around one kilo in a day. So in, a, in 30 days, it will eat around 105,000 kilograms per so. So at the end of, uh, of the year, it will be 1.2 million shillings. 50 of them, at the end of, uh, of the year, they will give us 330 and 50 souls at the end of the year. Then our projection is that we are going to invest 28 million, 260,000 to produce the source from the three months up to the one year when it will furrow the piglets. So we intend to sell these piglets. Each piglet will be at 120,000 shillings. So 350 times 120, it will give us 42 million at the end of the year. So when you get after 2 million minus the 28 million which we, we, we invested, we shall get 13 million as our profit. We are here to urge you to give us this money, and then we invest and also develop as police officers at large. You're already in this business? Not yet. Not yet. This is our project proposal, which we want to venture into in the next coming year. What would be your core business? Selling the piglets or the bachua pigs? Selling the piglets and also the ones which are extra, we shall fatten them and also sell them at, at 50 or 60 kilograms to get uh, money from them also. Okay, a piggery is something that obviously has got a very vast market, you know, y people yes, are going please. to be eating pork for quite a bit of time. Yes, please. Uh, I just have a, a, a little bit of, a, of, of doubt on your cost forecast. I think you need to do a little bit more on forecasting your costs. However, my advice is, or rather my question is, why don't you start slow, lower? Why don't you start with 10 and then, and then grow through yes, the process and then expand and scale? I'll, I'll, I'll donate the first 10 souls that you, that you, will, uh, you will start with. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Battle for cash. Battle for cash. Agri Investment Kibbutz meets the investors next. Is their coffee idea what the investors are looking for? We are an Agri Business Investment Club. We have 10 members. We have been in the business for three years, started in 2015. Our main products are certified Declono and Elite coffee seedlings. We have grafted fruit tree seedlings like apple, citrus, and mango. We have horticulture 
products. We specialize on high value crops like lettuce, sweet pepper, cherry tomato. We have two services. One is skilling youth in agribusiness and the other is joint venture coffee farming. Being in the business for three years, we are strategizing to diversify into something else. In the past, we have produced and sold coffee seedlings worth 300 million, but the demand in the market has changed. More farmers are demanding for clones. So our strategy in the developed financial strategic plan is shifting from elite to clones. Doing this, we need to have a mother garden seated on two acres that is able to generate 150,000 clones per year. In the joint venture coffee farming concept, we partner with people that have land, help them establish coffee estates, and in that strategy, we, our target is 1,000 acres. To the people we have talked with, we have secured 200 acres. But establishing 1,000 acres requires you to, to produce 680,000 clones seedlings. Each clone is sold at 1,500, so the value created is 1 billion and 20 million. In, in our farming, we do intercrop, that is coffee and matoke. So we use a spacing of 3 by 3, so that uh, an acre will accommodate 680 plants of coffee and 110 plants of banana. So to establish an acre of clones, of, of the clones, you need 680 clones and 120 plantlets of banana. So the plantlets required to cover 1,000 acres are 120,000, which is sold at 300, that is 360 million. So the value we are creating is 1 billion, 360 million. So what do we need from you investors? To produce these plantlets, you need to have a reliable supply of water. And we have acquired a farm in Nagalama. We have the land where we can put the mother garden. What is lacking is the water. We have received quotations from three, three pump like irrigation people. And we need a 20,000 liter capacity irrigation system. This requires an investment of 56 million. So we want you to invest 56 million in the project for 12.5 12.5 percent stake in the business. What, what what value do we give you? The investment requires 132 million 780,000. The the impact is that you as our investor you are going to be sharing on the value we are creating in selling the the seedlings. The beauty with it is that we are creating the product and creating the demand. So there is a synchrony between the product we are selling and we are where we are selling it. What is the impact to the society of the joint ventures? If we, are, if we successfully do the 1,000 acres, each plant of coffee will give you 300 kilograms of fair average quality every year. So you have a total production of 2,720,000 kilograms. This translates into an annual revenue of 13.6 billion. So you, you as our investors, you have a share in this money. Let's talk more about your revenue lines. Just discuss one after the other. Uh, our revenue lines basically are seedlings. In the first year, 2015, we sold seedlings, 200,000 200, 200, seedlings, which is sold at 300, so that generated 60 million. Then the next season, we sold seedlings worth 90 million. Yes, there were 300. So our revenue streams basically are flowing, are basically on the seedlings, and then the reason why we have horticulture, we've moved into horticulture when we acquired this place in Nagalama. Because horticulture brings in money faster than, than, than the, the coffee. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. considering that we are skilling youth, we use the earn as you learn model. So you have to provide something for them where they can do and be getting money when the session ends. Mm -hmm. So they do the horticulture on behalf of us, but they're entitled to a percentage, and we're entitled to a percentage. So mm -hmm. the horticulture basically brings in to the company, to us, about 10 million, that is after four months, and then the seedlings, the coffee business has raked in 90 million. But we want to shift from that. Per annum? Yeah, per annum. Mm -hmm. But once we have the, seed, the mother garden and producing the clones, 
our per annum revenues will be 225 million. Because when you have two acres of mother garden, you produce 8,000 8, cuttings, 8,000. And when, when you are looking at an efficiency of 75%, because all people in the business don't achieve 100%, basically the research center is at 40%, but ours is at 75%. Mm. If you can do 75% of the cuttings, you have 150,000. Selling each at 1,500, it translates into 20, 225 million. Mm. So the production cost is 80 million. So you are looking at, at a profit, at a profit is, that is 225, that is over 120 considering other things like maintenance costs and, and okay. that. Yeah. Mr. Sajito, I am in. <laughs> at last, a business partner for agri-investment kibbutz. We are honored. We take the breath in. Thank you so much. Thank you. We also welcome you to Nagarama to see the actual thing. Thank you. Next is Oyster Investment Club. So, initially we had a strategy of going into real estate. After acquiring the 100 acres, we got an idea in our investment club that instead of leaving, because our, our strategy was we buy land, we leave it appreciate. After some years, then we can get some money. But we realize instead of keeping uh, the 100 acres idle, we can utilize, uh, we can use it and, uh, through land use and uh, we create some extra value. So we made consultations with the NFA and some investors in agroforestry and uh, we, get, we got knowledge about the forest, eh? agroforestry, and uh, we, the knowledge points here we got were it is a patient and yet a profitable business, agroforestry. And then we also learned about the various risks associated with fruit growing. Then we learned also the species which are grown around. And then we got also uh, expert knowledge about the area we have the 200 acres and the type of tree which is suitable for our area the type of tree we we chose to grow was the eucalyptus grandis from south africa maturity 10 years we intend here to plant the 80 hectares in five phases that is in the next five years so starting with the next year so the total investment we require will come to about 334 million but it is done for all the phases all the phases that is how the total. much per phase uh year one will need 45 million year two 35 year three 35 because we intend to plant 20 hectares in year one that is next year and then in year two 15 15 until we'll complete the whole we, we will start harvesting in year 11 up to year 15. Mm -hmm. So the projected profit for year 11 is 900 million. Profit or? This sales? is profit after tax. Year 12 is 673. So what would the sales be? The sales? Because you said 900 is profit, mm -hmm. 45 okay. is input. What yes. are the sales? Year one will be 1.2 billion. 1.2. Yes. Okay. okay, so what do you need? You can uh, come in for the 334 million. Around year five, we start earning some uh, little income from the poles that we'll be selling off. He's talking about selling poles. You're talking about selling lots. Which is which? No, okay. When we start year one, you rem after You'll two years, mm. we'll do thinning. Mm -hmm. When you thin, those, those poles will be, uh, will, will start getting some revenue. All, we have incorporated all that in our sales focus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After five years, uh, the one which implanted the, uh, the, the crop A will also do some thinning after five years. So when you thin at uh, 
two, two years, you, you get some revenue from the pole which can be used in construction. At year five, you also do the second thinning. You can still also get some revenue also by selling the, the, the poles. Well, then the maturity, at maturity, that is after 10 years, that's when we start now the, the harvesting. You can do your lotting now. You can attract people to buy them now. And some of the monies they give you, you can then use to plant the lots that you have promised to plant for them and then also develop your own lots. That way you will have solved uh, both things. You will have been able to get money early and that money would, 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 would be interest free because you've actually sold uh, a, a, a potentially uh, a tree investment to someone who doesn't have the time to go and run that tree investment himself. And if you did that, I might be interested. Thank you. Thank you too. Okay. Yeah. Lastly, the lads of Kinasako with their affordable housing option. Uh, we, uh, we come from Kinakwekulakula Nyasako. Uh, this circle started in 2011. The category of the members we have, we have youths. We have women. Those make the biggest percentage. We have men. And uh, we are a village circle. So we cater for low income earners, most especially. And uh, when we looked at the situation, we decided to find a package that will help lift these people from the level they are to at least another level. When you look at these people, most of them, they are renting. They are staying in two-room houses, one-room house. So we came up with a business of real estate uh, which can be operated at that level which they can afford. Here what we do, as the circle, we invested in some good money. We first invested 50 million there. We could go and buy a big chunk of land at, an af at a fair price. Uh, we cut it into small pieces. Then we call these members who wish to buy some plots, who are ready to learn out of renting. We give them up to two years paying for that piece of land. It could be a 50 by 50. Uh, it is usually between six, five millions. Uh, they give an interest of 2% per month. So annually, they give an interest of 24%. Constructing a house may also be a hurdle. Mm. Then we brought in this element. That business we've been doing it, for now it is coming to two years. Then we, we have made a proposal where we wanted to start constructing houses to these people. Uh, we calculated a house, a three-roomed house with uh, a toilet outside, with a compound and a veranda and a store. We calculated it costs 13 millions and 20,000 shillings, a house of that kind. Again, we agree that we make a hardware so that when we are giving these people loans, we give them loans in the form of labor support and supply of building materials. There, we agree that we give a period of two to three years to these people. Is that cost being informed by having multiple sites? so that you can enjoy economies of scale or is it assuming you're building one house at a time uh we are building one cost one, one house at, at, at you know if you're building 10 houses mm. you'll make a saving because there will be bulk purchase of materials there will be bulk negotiations for everything and so on and so forth how much do you want 200 million shillings we have a budget of the hardware it is 50 million and 200 and shillings that is for setting up the hardware then the one hundred, the two millions for setting up the construction company, buying the overlaws, the elements on the head, this so-called miko, the bridge and what have you, at least for the company to start. Because the workers are already there, all they need are the equipments that belong to us. Again, uh, the balance will inject it in this business of, you know, buying plots. Because they are plots where sometimes we are called when we are not having enough capital but it is a revolving fund do you have any land you haven't sold yes we have that land but you know when you have more because at times they may call you when it is being sold cheaply when you don't have enough capital to to to, to buy that particular time how much are you collecting in membership subscription every month we we, we collect close to two millions only from membership fees uh -huh. not shares not savings What's not the interest structure like the structure? Mm, fee structure for membership. The fee structure for membership. Mm, I want to become a member next month. 15,000 shillings membership and the account is 5,000. So 20,000 only for membership. Then you start buying shares. So a, share, a share is 10,000 shillings. 
Well, I think it's a good idea. I Thank see you. you have multiple revenue streams. You have the plots for sale. You have the hardware as a, as a commercial venture. Mm -hmm. You have the houses. All those are, are, are revenue streams. As you're keeping money yeah, within to yourself. Just to yeah. add on, eh, on the profitability of the business. There is the 2% that is got from the plot when someone is buying. Mm -hmm. And remember, we bought the plot, for example, at a fair price. So there's a capital then gain we cut it there. into pieces. Again, there is a margin there. Just two points of caution as you go along. Mm. Um, have a sense of the future. Have a sense of not rebuilding what my colleague is calling slums. So please, even if people are under hardship, one, one of your models should be that we want people to stand uh, or, or to realize 15 years, 20 years from now mm -hmm. that they made a good decision working with us. Okay. So make sure your, your, your estates are, 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 are planned. Make sure your estates are, 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 can attract people Kina Sako fails to win themselves a business partner today, but they still have a shot at winning any of the cash prizes in the battle for cash, a study trip to Nairobi and business advisory services from PricewaterhouseCoopers for a whole year. You, the viewer, are an important part in deciding who wins season two of the battle for cash. Now, next week, we'll open the voting line, so vote wisely. Thank you for watching.